Welcome back to the channel everyone. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, we'll be making repairs to one of the coin door buttons on my Simpsons Arcade 1UP cab. If you're new to the channel, I've got a few Arcade 1UP cabs, and I enjoy modifying them and emulation in general. However, if you're not new, you'll notice I'm using a different voice when narrating this video. Please don't be alarmed, as I use AI voices. I do this because I don't like the sound of my own, and these AI voices offer me options to pick from. Regardless, we're here for a repair, and it's to one of my modification projects, an Arcade 1UP Simpsons cab that I've added a few hard mods to and I've soft modded the OS. One of the hard modifications I've made is adding working coin door buttons for each of the players. However, the player 4 coin door button isn't working right, and I'm unable to use that button as it seems to be stuck in the pressed action and isn't releasing. The coin doors are a new hard mod, and sometimes when making modifications to your cabs, the experience can be a bit like trial and error. This issue seems simple, based on the feel of the controls. I'm guessing what happened is that the glue on the screw that held that coin door in certain place has failed, or maybe I just didn't use enough. In order to fix this issue, we'll have to take the unit apart and take a look at the inside of the coin doors. In order for us to take a look inside, we'll need to remove the four screws on the top of the control deck, and once those screws have been removed, the control deck will lift right out. However, we do need to be mindful of the cables that connect to the back of the control deck and lead to the PCB board on the back of the monitor. This cab also has a second wiring harness that leads from the control deck down to each of the buttons I've installed on the front of the cab. This wiring harness is what takes the signal from the buttons on the coin door to the control deck's PCB when someone has pressed and activated one of the coin door buttons. The four screws in the two stock cables are removed just like any other cab's control deck. However, the coin door harness disconnects with sets of spade connectors in the middle of the wire. The harness gives us a way to service the unit easier and lets us reconnect when needed. This is again in theory as the modification process is very much trial and error. I may redesign how I have the harness, and in truth, I've done zero cable management on this system, so the guts look like crap. What can I say? Cable management is the least fun, and I don't like doing it. I hate dressing a panel at work, and this is basically the same thing, but I'm not getting paid to do it. I do wish to digress for a minute and make an introduction of sorts. I'm sure that it's painfully obvious that this is a small channel. So small that I, a singular person of one, am responsible for everything from the script writing and video editing to the camera shots and finding background music or sound effects. I'd like to try and combat some of this singular driven channel layout by adding an AI avatar. With that in mind, I'd like to introduce technically not AI, or tech AI for short. Greetings and salutations, everyone. It's great to be here. I'm Tech AI, and if technically not a technician ever needs a hand, I'll be here to help. Most of the time, I'll help drive home important points and information. Right now, I do have a message for all of you on YouTube. I'd like to remind you to like and comment on this video. If you've not done so, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with a friend. All of these acts are but small clicks of the mouse for you. However, to this little channel, those acts mean the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tech AI. It's great to have you as part of the team, and I look forward to working with you on our future projects. Now, with those introductions out of the way, let's get back to the repair. I'm going to need to have the coin door completely off. The issue with doing so is that the unit isn't really designed to have removable coin doors, and each door has six small screws with what I'll call plastic caps keeping the doors in place. The plastic caps are fixed together with the raised nubs from the coin doors, and the screws help hold them all in place. I'll also want to remove a small top panel to which I've added an external USB port. I don't need to remove it, but I don't really feel like navigating around it. To remove the small top front panel that houses my external USB ports, I unplugged the ports from the internal USB power and hub, and I unscrewed the side screws from the front of the cab. This let me spread the front of the cab enough that I was able to separate the front top panel from the cab without needing to disassemble the full cab, and that's kind of nice as I'm kind of lazy, and this is the weekend. After removing the control deck and the small top front panel, I'll start to remove all of the screws and the plastic caps that work together to hold the coin door in, and I'm going to attempt to make this repair without fully removing the front panel. Again, I'm lazy. Also, I'm not so worried about removing these screws and plastic caps, but I am worried about getting them back on. You see, taking things apart is one thing, getting them all back together and in working order is a whole other story. 
Once we had the screws and plastic caps off of the coin door, it fell right off, and the affected coin door button fell right out along with its accompanying screw. Like I said earlier, I kind of felt like this was a screw-related issue based on the feel of the cab's button. With all of the parts in hand and seeing that this issue could be fixed with a little model glue, I went and recovered my glue and started to make repairs. Making the repair to the coin door and insert was very easy. All that was needed was to add a single drop of glue to the screw hole and insert the screw so that it would hold the coin door insert, yet give the insert the flexibility needed to pivot at the top. Now that the needed repairs have been made to the coin door and button insert, we'll turn our attention to reinstalling this modification. If you've not seen my video on this build, I'll be sure to link to it in the description. But the short version of this mod is that we've added working buttons behind the coin doors that the coin inserts a press against to add coins to arcade games in Retro Arc. These buttons, in conjunction with the player ready buttons, also give us the ability to have separate start and select buttons in console games. This can be very convenient when it comes to game compatibility on many video game consoles. To reinstall this mod, we'll simply remount the front coin door back over top of the front panel. This coin door panel has small plastic feet that fit into small, factory-made holes on the front panel. This makes fitting the coin door into the front panel very easy. When I add the screws and plastic caps back on at first, I only add two of them, and I don't screw them down all the way, as I'll be needing the coin door with the button mounted behind it to have some play that will let me make adjustments. The ability to make adjustments is very helpful, and without that, I'd not be able to get the coin door insert and the button mounted behind it aligned correctly. It takes a minute to get the button and the coin door insert aligned. However, once the two are in the right spot, arcade modification magic happens. Okay, maybe that's just an overly dramatic way of saying that when we press the coin insert, the button mounted behind it also gets triggered. Regardless, once the two are aligned and in working order, we'll finish putting all the screws back in while we continue to check the working condition of the modded inserts, and we'll make adjustments to them and the buttons as needed, ensuring the two stay aligned and working as we fully mount the coin door with the remaining screws and plastic mounting caps. As I said earlier, I wasn't so worried about getting everything apart, but putting it all together is a different story. The screws and the plastic mounting caps are very small and are giving me a little trouble. However, with persistence and holding my jaw just right, I'm able to get each screw started. Again, I'll be checking the insert and button alignments now and again and making the needed adjustments along the way. After getting all of the screws and plastic mounting caps secured and getting the coin insert and buttons aligned, we'll need to get the wiring harness connected to each of the buttons. Our wiring harness is what carries a signal from the press coin button to the control deck, so if we don't free connect them, the buttons will not work. I made this wiring harness longer than needed, as I didn't want connecting and disconnecting the control deck to be an issue. I can't say the same about the factory connections. Those two connections are short, and Arcade 1UP didn't seem to have disconnecting and reconnecting in mind. I do want to point out that my wiring harness isn't perfect. In fact, when disconnecting it the first time, one of the points on it did disconnect, and I had to crimp a new female spade connector on my harness. It wasn't a real big deal, and it only took a minute of time to repair. However, it's important to point out that my wiring harness solution works, but the crimp connections versus a hard solder point on each spade connection is a shortcoming of my harness. After making the repair to the coin door insert, and after repairing the spade connector that broke when disconnecting the wiring harness, I'll reinstall the button side of the harness, and when done, I'll run a final test on all the moving parts and then reconnect both sides of the harness together. Once the harness is reconnected, I can connect the stock cabling, the USB trackball cable, and reinstall the control deck into the main cab. It's safe to say that when time permits, I'll work more with the trackball, and I'll figure out how to get those games set up and working in main. The gold in these series should play well on this cab. However, I do hear there isn't a way to remove the cursor, and I can see that little arrow getting annoying very quickly. When reconnecting all the cabling, I kind of have a plan. I start with the longest and work my way back. The USB cable for the trackball is the longest, so I'll connect it to the internal USB hub first. I'll then move to the harness for the four buttons, and as stated, the stock cabling is by far the shortest. So the stock cables will be connected last. After all the cabling is connected, we'll need to remount the control deck and reinstall the four screws that hold the deck in. If the buttons and harness are all connected correctly, we should have a working unit, but we'll not know until we test the unit out. I've not tried this as of yet, but I don't believe the coin buttons will do anything in the repackaged APK files. I only believe they'll work with third-party apps like RetroArc. However, again, 
I've not done any testing. I did hear of an APK loaded with three button games, and I would like to see if there is any interaction with three button games. This may lead to a dead end, but it should be fun to try. To test this repaired mod out, I'll be launching Retro Arc from the Nova home screen. The home screen lets me launch different APKs from one central and clean looking location that I can access with the native Simpson stock controls. If you'd like to learn more about using this mod, I'll have a link in the description so you can check it out. From the Nova home screen, I'll launch Retro Arc, and I'm going to navigate to a four player arcade game, and I'll pick a fan favorite, Sunset Riders. When testing with this ROM, I saw two things. The first is that the bindings for my control deck are not correct, and I'll need to rebind the player ready and coin buttons. However, the second has me worried, and that is that the coin door button I'm working on is still not working when pressed. I'm going to have to open the control deck again to look inside the unit to see what's going on. Before I take the deck off the unit, I can tell you that the coin door button and insert all seem fine. When I press the button, I hear the click, and when the button is released, it does push the insert back out like it should. This makes me think that one of my spade connectors isn't seated correctly, and I'm guessing this should be an easy fix. There are very few connection points on the harness, and because we know what button is being affected, it's easy to know what part of the harness needs to be checked. After removing the control deck and checking out the button in the harness, I did see one connection that wasn't as secure as it could have been. I did test a few more connections out, as I didn't want to have to open the deck a third time. In short, because I needed to remap a few things anyway, I simply used Retro Arc's button mapper feature to help tell me if the coin door button was being pressed or not. This let me test my connection, and when I was confident that it was working, I reinstalled the control deck. After using Retro Arc's button mapping feature to check and verify the correct mapping of all the player ready and coin buttons, I'll place the deck back in, but I'll test the unit in the game first before I tie down the deck with screws. Again, I'll pick the channel favorite Sunset Riders, as this is a fun game and it happens to be a 4 player. I'm not going to go crazy testing this out, as the only issue that we had was the player 4 coin button. The game starts as expected, and now that repairs are done, all 4 of our coin doors are working as designed. I feel like it's safe to call this one a win. With our testing done, I'll now place the last four screws in the deck, and I'll secure the control deck in place. The hardware on the unit is now ready for hours of arcade gaming fun. In conclusion, this repair wasn't a big deal, and making the repair was a nice break from the day-to-day -day grind. This modification should give me a nice compatibility for a ton of console platforms and improve the feel of the arcade ROMs. Regardless, I'd hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you, I'd like to ask that if you did enjoy it that you hit that like button, leave me a comment in the description, and if you've not done so yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. All of these are just small clicks of a mouse for you, but those small clicks help me beat the YouTube algorithm, and I need that. Thank you.